What's up, Calvin Gang? All right, so we got this wave problem, basically. So you got a transverse sine wave with a, you know, it gives you these functions. It gives you all, the, uh, the amplitude, the velocity, and the wavelength. And it gives you like 15 parts. Like, it goes up to I. Like, that's crazy, come on. That's probably why you're here. You don't want to solve all these problems. I don't blame you, all right? So let's get started on it. Okay, so first, that's for what is the frequency of the rate wave? So to find frequency, uh, I like to find period first. So frequency, or I guess period, period is equal to, uh, it's gonna be the, uh, the wavelength divided by the velocity, right? So we have these two values, so the frequency is 1.80 and the velocity is 36.0. And so that's gonna give you a period of uh, 0.05 seconds, 0.05 seconds. Now if you want the frequency, the frequency is the inverse of the, the, the period, right? So if you take one over 0 0.05, 0 0.05, you're going to get 20 hertz. The unit is going to be 1 over seconds, which is the same as hertz. So let's write that for here. A frequency is equal to 20 hertz. Part B. What is part B asking for? What is angular frequency of the wave? Okay, so angular frequency, that's another form of need. So W, angular frequency, the curvy W thing, is 2 pi times the frequency. So we have this, right? So W is equal to 2 pi times 20 hertz. So that's going to give you 40 pi. I like it just to keep it at 40 pi, but the answer probably wants it in a different form. Um, that's, that, I guess the number ended up to be 126. Uh, radius a second is the unit. So either way, you can keep it as whatever form you want. I like 40 pi. I just like to keep my pi in my answer because like I said, I like the math kind of stuff. So I'm going to keep it as 40 pi or 126 radians a second. You can do whatever one you want. What is he asking for? Wait, did he give us D? What did he give us? Yeah, OK. Oh, the wave number is what I'm looking for here. I actually need to know that this wrong, I think. Okay, so wave number k. So wave number k is equal to 2 pi over lambda wavelength. So we have this, of course. So that's pretty much all this problem is. Uh, it's just getting started. It's just figuring things out like this. So wave over lambda is 1.80, and this is going to give you about 3.49. one yeah radians a minute okay part D now this is where it starts getting fun right all right now I want you to write I want you to type in a function uh, in terms of X and T that describes the uh, y position of the wave uh, so let's do that so a uh, function for a wave that we're going to be using is the most common one that you'll see in terms of X and T so this is going to be amplitude times cosine of, uh, what do you use? You use uh, I think you use k. Yeah, so it's, it's kx minus uh, wt. But this is the form we're going to use. So we have all this stuff, right? So if we want to use this, let's just plug it in over here. So it's going to be y of x of t is equal to the amplitude, which we found, 2.50. What does it want to do? Meters? Or yeah, I like it to do it in meters. So millimeters to meters, you're just going to divide by a thousand. So this is going to end up being 0 0.00250 cosine. Uh, so our k is right here. We found it. So 3.49x minus w, which we found here. I'm going to use 126d. Uh, there you go. That's what it wants. So that's the answer to that one. Let's move on. Part E. What is part E asking for? What is y of t for the particle at the left end of the string? So uh, basically it's asking for the same thing, but just in terms of t, right? It doesn't want it in terms of x. Um, how are we going to describe this? Well, when we have our function here, it says at the beginning that at time zero, the left end of the string has its maximum upward displacement, which means when we're looking at our cosine function, it's starting here and then it's kind of moving into our function. So this actually makes a lot of sense. This means that it's maximum displacement. So if it's maximum displacement, uh, that means its x is going to be, you know, just 
or I mean, like you know, it's starting in its normal function. There's going to be no displacement if you had a cosine because cosine of cosine of zero is equal to one. So that means it's starting at its maximum displacement. If you had a cosine function that started like this, that means it had this initial displacement basically of whatever this distance is. But this function doesn't have that. So if you want to convert just to in terms of x, right? Yeah, in terms of x, there's going to be no starting displacement. So we can say that y in terms of just x, or no, we're starting in terms of t. So y of t is equal to 0 0.00250 cosine, and then it's just going to be negative 1 to 6t. But one thing about cosine is that negative and positive cosine mean the same thing. So I'm pretty sure you can take out this negative. It means the exact same thing. Actually, I'm sure you can take out that negative, because that's what I plugged in. Okay, now what does it want? Now it says, what is y of t for the particle 1.5 meters to the right of the origin? So now we are actually dealing with this weird situation. Let's say that uh, we're here, and then, uh, I don't know, how much is like one point? How much would that be? It'd be like around here, probably. This is probably like 1.35 meters, right? We're trying to find, basically, if we started here, uh, what would it look like? So that means we're, we are going to have this displacement value. So what does this displacement value look like? Um, so you can say this displacement, basically, I'm going to call it this, this circle thingy. That's going to be whatever your total wavelength is. So it's going to be lambda over whatever your displacement is, and then times 2 pi. So we're going to take this to be, because uh, we're starting out 1.35 meters, right? And then it's the distance. Yes, so it's going to be 1.35 divided by 1.80 and then times 2 pi. And this is our starting displacement, basically. So what you're going to do is just plug this right in to where uh, to your function, basically. I didn't mean to do that. So y of t is equal to 0 0.00250 cosine uh, 120, 126t. But then it's going to be plus that number. Uh, I guess you can plug that in your calculator if you feel like it. Over 180 times 2 pi. There you go. That's your part for f. Uh, what is g asking for? What is the maximum magnitude or transverse velocity of any particle on the string? All right, let's do that. So we're going to need to find velocity, right? Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can use calculus if you feel like it, or uh, you can just uh, know your equation uh, if you haven't taken calculus yet. Um, but if you have taken calculus, I'm going to do it the calculus way, because that's what I like to do. So we're looking at y prime of t, right? We're trying to like, find the velocity in terms of t, which is y prime of t. So what you're going to do is, you're because we're taking it with respect to t, we're going to look at this function here. Uh, we're not doing displacement on this one, are we? No, we're not doing displacement on this one. Okay, so it's going to be... If we're taking, the, okay, this one with respect to x, so what we're, when you take the derivative of this, you're going to need to do chain rule, right? So we're going to have, the cosine is going to become sine. So when cosine becomes sine, it's going to become negative sine. But then we're also going to have to take the derivative of the inside and multiply it. So the derivative of the inside is just going to be 125. So what's going to end up happening is it's going to be negative 126, and then multiply it by our 0 0.00250. That's going to be sine of 126 t. So that's what our you know, velocity in terms of that is. Now when you're looking at maximum velocity, uh, maximum velocity happens at whatever time makes this sign equal to 1, right? Because sine kind of fluctuates between 1 and 0, or 1 and negative 1, right? So this is, this is 1, this is negative 1. So if you're trying to find when it's its maximum velocity, you don't have to find that exact time. All you have to do is make the assumption that Okay, sine is just going to be equal to 1 at that max velocity because anything less, any other time, it cannot exceed 1. It's just going to be some decimal, and then it's going to reach 1, and then it's going to go back down to some decimal. So basically, we can just say that this sine is equal to 1 in our maximum velocity. So I'm going to label this max is equal to negative 126 times 0 0.00250. So you do this of t, and you're going to get... Uh, I get a number for this. Oh, I didn't. I didn't write it down. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's over here. Though. 
EFG. Wow, we're really far ahead. Right. Okay. What's the number? 0 0.314. Y prime of T X is equal to 0 0.314 meters a second. I'm pretty sure that would give you a negative number. Actually, I'm sure it gave you a negative number, but we're looking for magnitude. So it would be a negative 0 0.314, and you can just say it's a positive, because that's going to be its velocity, right? Find the, okay, part H, oh man, we have two problems left. Find the transverse displacement of a particle 1.35 meters to the right of the origin and time that. Oof, okay, we can do that, right? Okay, we can do that, that's pretty simple. This is just plugging into an equation that we found earlier. So what it gives us is a position and a time, right? Yeah, it gives us a position and a time, and it wants to find its transverse displacement, which is like how far up or down it's gone. So we're going to be looking at this function here, right? And all we have to do is plug in our x value and our y value. So we're saying y, and then our x value is, what is our x value? 1.35. And then our t value is 0 0.0625. That's the numbers and ones, I think. Yep. Okay, so all we have to do is plug this into this. So it's going to be, I'm going to write it below, because 0 0.00250 cosine. 3.49 times x, which is our x value, 1.35 minus 126 times our t, 0.0625. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. And we plug that in. I didn't write this down again. I guess I didn't think I was going to make a video on this problem. You're going to get negative 2.50 times 10 to the negative 3. Uh, negative 2.50 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. So y is equal to that. All right, we have one problem left. Ooh, 12 minutes in, let's go. That's what happens when you have part i in a question. Okay, and then find the transverse velocity of a particle, 1.35 meters to the right of the origin at time that. So instead of uh, finding its position, we're trying to find its velocity. Okay, so let's think about this. There's two ways you can do this. You can actually solve the problem or you cannot solve the problem, right? So I actually solved the problem, but you didn't need to do that, right? Because uh, what happens is, let's look at our y value, and let's just think about this, right? So where we're at, right, our y value is at its maximum displacement, right? We see that, right? Uh, 2.50 times 10 to negative three meters, that's equal to our amplitude. Our amplitude, basically, let's, let's draw a function of what this would kind of look like, just very roughly. Our function would look like this, right? Where this is equal to, you know, 2.50 millimeters, and this is equal to negative 2.50 millimeters. So at that time, we're equal to this number. This is basically where we're at at this at this uh, time and place. So what is our velocity at this point? Our instantaneous velocity at this point. Well, velocity is equal to the slope, right? So if we look at our slope at this point, it's parallel, right? It's parallel to the axis. It's zero. So that's our velocity. It's equal to zero at this point. So if that makes sense to you, um, yeah, but if you don't, if that doesn't make sense to you, I guess what you could do uh, is I think you could just plug it into this equal, or the, the derivative equation we found here. Uh, I guess we found it earlier. You would also get a zero. Uh, it'd be the same thing. So there's two ways logically to think about this, but basically I, your velocity is equal to zero. You get what you're saying. At that instantaneous moment. So yeah. Um, I'd say do this kind of problem. So yeah, good luck on your calculus physics homework. Uh, calculus physics homework. Uh, yeah, I don't like problems that are this long. I maybe won't make these anymore. But if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, thanks for the support. See you in the next video, guys. Peace.